Well, guys, about, uh, let's see, it was sometime last winter. Um, I put out a video, I guess it was early spring, actually. I put out a video uh, telling you about a book that I had just written. It was my first book ever. Um, never really saw myself as a writer, but I always loved a good Western, especially Louis L'Amour, uh, Zane Gray, J.T. Edson. Um, there's a number of good Western writers out there, and I just, as a teenager, I loved to spend my time reading um, Westerns. Um, I know a lot of teens now are more into video games, but I spent as much time reading back then as a lot of teens do now playing video games. I'd stay up most of the night, uh, spend most of the day if I could get away with it, <clears throat> although I wasn't often allowed to do that because there was too many chores to be done. But <clears throat> recently I decided that I wanted to try my hand at writing. And so I wrote the first book and put it out, uh, The White Mountain Bigfoot. <clears throat> It is actually a Western with a little bit of a sci-fi twist to it. I uh, spent a lot of time out in the Pacific Northwest as a driver, uh, semi-truck driver, delivering cars. And there's a lot of Bigfoot signs out there advertising something to do with Bigfoot. So <clears throat> I had so many positive responses from the first book that I wrote. But I thought, well, why not try it again? So, volume two. The White Mountain Bigfoot. This one is titled Broken Arrow Ranch. <clears throat> and in this book, I had a lot of fun. The cool thing about writing a book is you can let your imagination run wild. And so I used my little hometown here in Spencer, Tennessee. And a lot of the characters in this book are based on, and some even named after, real life people that I know. <clears throat> um, one of them right here in the front of the book, uh, there's a thank you to Michael Mooneyham. He is a fellow lover of a good western. Um, he's also the owner of, uh, at this point in time, the only uh, really decent cafe in town. Um, small restaurant and they serve a pretty wide range on their menu uh, there is a new restaurant coming into town and there's another small one down the road it's more like a little fast food place but Michaels has a good sit-down meal with good home-cooked food and so not only did I leave a thank you to Michael for loaning me many a good book <clears throat> but he's also um, in this book and uh, You'll recognize it if you take the time to read. The description of where his little cafe is located in the fork of a road uh, matches where it's located in Spencer, Tennessee. The Old Times Cafe. Y'all should just stop by there and visit sometimes. Just off of Highway 111, nice four lane road. If you ever come to Fall Creek Falls State Park, we are proud to say that it is the tallest or highest waterfall east of the Rockies. And it's in our own little home county here. So a lot of folks travel for a long ways to see that. So if you ever come to see Fall Creek Falls State Park, then you need to go by Old Times Cafe and say hi to Michael Mooneyham. So Michael actually saved the character um, in this book, the main character, from an ambush. <clears throat> and I um, hope he likes it. Then there's um, Deputy Carter that becomes Sheriff Carter. We currently have... Um, the sheriff of our county. His last name is Carter. So I kind of use that as the uh, the basis for bringing uh, Deputy Carter into the book <clears throat> under similar circumstances. Um, our sheriff passed away and uh, Chief Carter of the Spencer Police Department was placed in the position of sheriff by the um, commissioners, the county commission, the county commission board. So there's a lot of things in this particular book that are people I know or situations that took place. Um, a lot of the terrain 
I've driven through, I've spent quite a bit of time in it. And so there are some areas like when uh, after Ted is shot and Zacchaeus and Matt continue on their journey and they're following a large red cliff and they come up through a little cut in the cliff and they go along a plateau for a ways. Uh, you'll actually, you can follow that particular trail. If you go north from Flagstaff, and I can't remember the name of that highway. Um, I don't know, I'm just drawing a blank on that. But anyway, if you go north, uh, due north from Flagstaff, Arizona, clear up to Page, you'll follow that same red cliff. Now in that area is the Navajo Indian Reservation. And um, some friends of mine live on there. And they have a daughter named Nahania. Sweet young woman. When I first met her, she was probably eh, eight or nine years old, young young girl. And um, I think she's actually, uh, I believe she's in high school or maybe even just going into college now. It's, it's been a little while. So I used her name, Nahania, for the character in this book that is kidnapped. And I believe, from what I remember of her, a lot of the actions of the young lady in the book would be the way that Nahania would um, would act. Ma Johnson, in this book, <clears throat> is a sweet lady who adopted me here a few years ago um, as a as a son. She's kind of like my adopted mom, adopted grandmother to my children. Awesome, awesome person. And she helped with the editing of this book, gave me a lot of ideas. Uh, my sister helped with the editing. And as I've been reading through it a little bit, I've noticed we did miss a few things. But hey, we're not professional writers and we're not professional editors. We just have a good time. My dad helped me with it. Um, he's actually in the process of working on his first book. So hopefully he'll finish it. Uh, he has a very unique writing style that um, I enjoy. And I think you guys would too if he gets it finished. Um, so anyway, there's there's a number of places in here that I've been and I used the the actual terrain and mountains to have my story go through. Um, hope you guys enjoy it if you take the time to to buy it. I have already gone back in and worked on some editing issues and uh, changed a few things. So any future purchases of this book would uh, have a few improvements over what you see me holding in my hand. But as you can see, it is actually the size, thickness of a normal Western book. The first one was more of a novella, a little shorter than this one. And I'm in the process of going back and rewriting it to expand it a little bit. It'll still be the same story, but I'm gonna expand it some. And in its reprint, it will be shrunk down to where the print size matches this one and I'm, I don't know if I'll ever get it done or not but I kind of have the idea at this point of maybe eight or ten books in this series depending on whether people like it enough to keep buying it and leaving me positive reviews on Amazon and Kindle um, and I'll tell you if you want to hear the first few chapters of the original book volume one but you don't want to have to buy it or take the time to read it log on to a YouTube channel called Dixie Cryptid. Cam is the narrator on there, and I've talked with Cam on the phone a few times. Cam is a great guy, down to earth, hardworking guy that kind of stepped on a banana peel and fell into something. Um, his channel, when he started it, he really didn't realize it was gonna go as big as it did, but people love his voice, the way he narrates his stories, um, it's just its just great. I love listening to it as I'm driving down the road whenever he puts a new story out. Um, I'll log on and listen to that through my headset while I'm driving. There's no video along with it, so it's totally legal. But he's got quite a few videos out now. And I would highly encourage you guys, if you like to sit around and listen to a good story or listen to one while you're driving down the road, Dixie Cryptid on YouTube. Um, great, great channel. So he narrated the first, um, I think, three chapters of Volume 1. 
and he does a fantastic job. And I'm hoping that he'll have time and the interest to also do the same thing with this book. Um, so whether I ever write another one, I have achieved a dream of being a published author. Dog goes out here running around, and I'm sitting in my little homestead ranch right now. Uh, I don't have any horses. Now that I'm out on the road, I let them go. So you can see the corral behind me. It's kind of grown up. But I'm thinking about getting into some cattle. I've got a number of acres down in the creek bottom area down through there. And um, I'd like to run a few cattle. The next best thing you saw riding with me, his real name's Brandon, by the way, but uh, he nicknamed himself the next best thing because he was the next best thing to the paperwork princess that rides with me uh, that you guys are very familiar with. So he's thinking about going in with me and running a few cattle. And he's actually on his way up right now to kind of look it over and see if we can become cattleman extraordinaire. Hey guys, thanks for all the encouragement on the YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing and watching. And I've noticed that when I'm looking at the numbers on my channel, um, a little more than half of the people that watch my videos haven't subscribed. So please take a moment, subscribe, cost you nothing. Uh, click on that notification bell to make sure that you get any future notifications. I know I tend to talk and rattle on a lot. If you ever call me on the phone about car hauling, I can talk for hours about car hauling. Um, I live life to the fullest. Life's too short. Interesting fact. I wrote this book on my cell phone. I have an iPhone 8S. I think that's what it's called. I'm not good on technology. My daughter got it for me. But I wrote this book mostly with my thumbs. So y'all enjoy. It's a lot of work writing a book with your thumbs. Just saying. Thanks for watching. And I'll see y'all out on the road again. And of course, I wouldn't have been able to figure out how to do the publishing if it hadn't been for the paperwork princess helping me with that. So many thanks to her efforts to get this book actually published. And it looks like I've got company because the little chihuahuas are starting to bark.